Okay, we're in a position to start to think about how we construct the um, loom that we can use for uh, re-sewing the text block. So what I've done here, if I move those out of the way, as a base, what I've done is um, just get a piece of um, sheet rock. Sheet rock's ideal, it's just very easy to sort of drill through. Um, this is just a base, it doesn't need to provide any strength as such. Um, I did take the opportunity just to put some tape along these edges just to seal it. Clearly I don't want sort of gypsum dust going everywhere while we're working on a you know, sort of very fragile old book. So um, that's going to serve as a base and then you'll probably recall the difficulty we had when we were sewing Granville Sharp's book where we were using sort of metal spikes to um, hold the um, the uh, thread. Um, so instead we're going to uh, make a loom uh, that uses sort of twine from the get-go and in order to do that what we're going to need are some supports at the side and these two bricks are going to be that. Um, but we also need uh, in effect a bridge across the top to actually hold these strings in place so that's going to need a bit of drilling um, but first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shim and just draw an outline of the shim onto the uh, sort of paper surface of the um, sheetrock here. This is going to be important because I'm going to be drilling holes in both the shim and the sheetrock and I want everything to be remaining in place as I do it so that I'm consistent uh, through both. So that then gives me this sort of outline here, like so. Um, the idea is what we're going to do is drill holes here. These are going to sit like this and like this. There'll be strings going down through the holes and that'll be the work surface that we use for our sewing. So, the next step is to think about where we want the holes to be. So to do that, we will need the text block itself. So what I'm going to do is just put aside the board and the topmost sort of loose pages. They're quite precious, so I don't want those to go away. These are sort of loosely held, so I'll leave those as they are. Next, what I'm going to do is put the shim in its place. And I'm going to lay the text block like so. So, what I'm going to do is mark on the shim where the gatherings are, uh, sorry, the um, raised headbands are. Because that's where we're going to. Um, be sewing and uh, obviously we're creating new headbands. So as you can see, the um, this is all in various states of disrepair, but what I can already see is there aren't any other places where this, I don't believe this text box ever been reassembled. I think this calf is basically original from 1664, which is quite early for calf as it happens. Um, I would have expected this to be vellum, but uh, whatever. So that means that, um, you know, the, these have been sewn here before, and I want to try and replicate that if I can. So if we look closely, we can see one here at the very top, probably a little remnant of a headband of some description, and one here, 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 here. I get this right. Yeah. Here. There's actually a faint one. But it's there, right here. Like so. And just to make life easier on myself, I'm going to write the word top here at this edge. So I don't get this uh, turned upside down accidentally later on. Move that to one side. Oh. Also, I'm going to write the word top here, and that way I know that I'll be dealing like with like. 
like so. Okay, so I'm now gonna take this downstairs and drill these holes. Okay, so we now have the holes drilled in both the gypsum and the wood. So what I'm gonna do here is now thread them with this. So I've, I'm using basically the most vicious needle you'll ever see. Um, just it has a very large eye there, so it's quite easy to sort of thread, but I'm gonna make life easy on myself. Um, I'm just gonna go through all the holes with one length of string and then cut it. I'm not gonna sort of re-thread the needle sort of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. That's too much like hard work. So, um, okay, let's make a start here. I'm going to continue with this and uh, in a second we'll see them all threaded. And, uh, I'm, as you can see, using an enormous length of um, string. Also worked out a bit of a pro tip, which is if when I push the needle in, I give it a vicious side to side wiggle, it actually comes to a lot easier like that. So. This should actually be now. Famous last words, this one's now giving a bit of difficulty. I don't want to split the shim if I can avoid it, so. Getting there, and on we go. So as you can see, I've um, used a gargantuan amount of um, twine here. It's very deliberate. Um, I've learned the hard way that uh, you can never really have enough of this stuff uh, when it comes to actually um, having legs of twine at the back of the book and you know ready to glue down and thread into the boards eventually so you know we really you know want these nice and long um, but obviously we don't need this length for the actual uh, threading process so what I'm going to be doing here is tying these down and then um, like so in such a way that um, I just have a nice working space here at the base. So I'm just going to make a just a simple uh, slip knot, nothing, uh, nothing grandiose. Just you know, big enough so that um, it won't uh, sort of slip through the hole unexpectedly. It doesn't even need to be desperately tight. So I'm going to work my way along each of these. Now I can safely like cut them at the end. Again, just do a simple knot here. And so on and so on, all the way along until we have our loom ready to start work. Okay, the loom is ready. And now our work on the text block can begin. 